Anime Recaps here. Today I'm going to explain a comedy romance anime called Hensuki. Are you willing to fall in love with a perv as long as she's a cutie? Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Kiryu Keiki is your typical girlfriendless high school student. Like the others, he wants to live out his youth, enjoying every bit of it. One morning, he wakes up from a perverted dream involving some of the girls he interacts with in his everyday life. His younger sister, who sleeps beside him in his bed, wakes up after he causes a ruckus first thing in the morning. It seems he has a very close relationship with his sister for them to be sleeping together in the same bed. That day after school, he goes to his club, the calligraphy club, only to find the club room full of trash. Third year student Tokihara Sayuki, the club president, is already there, practicing her calligraphy and making a mess out of discarded writings. Keiki enlists the help of his younger sister, Kiryu Mizuha, and the other club members, Koga Yuika and Nanjo Mao, to clean the club room. After they all finish cleaning, Keiki offers to stay behind to clean up the last of the things they used. The others then go home. After he empties the water bucket and goes back to the room, Keiki notices a letter addressed to him placed on the table. He picks it up and soon realizes that it's a love letter. He is overjoyed by this. Could this finally be the end of his girlfriendless era? There's one thing unusual about it though. On top of the love letter is a pair of white undies. The next day while playing cards, he asks his friend Akiyama Shoma what he thinks of the undies. His friend replies that perhaps the sender was in a hurry and dropped them. Keiki comments, what kind of hurry do you have to be to drop your underwear? The two also wonder how come the sender didn't write their name. Could it be a prank? Shoma says that it's a bit immature for someone their age to pull off such pranks. Shoma calls the sender of the love letter Cinderella. He tells Keiki that they have to call her something, explaining that this Cinderella dropped her undies instead of her shoe. He theorizes that Cinderella could be among the girls who cleaned up the club room. He says that nobody got inside the club room after Keiki locked the doors yesterday and that he should go look for clues there. Keiki acts on this suggestion. On his way to the club room, he meets Sayuki. She urges him to take a nap in the club room after noticing that he's got bags under his eyes. He declines this offer, saying that he has class. He thinks that if Sayuki is Cinderella, the key should be of concern to her. However, this doesn't seem to bother her. Sometime later, Kiki goes to the library, where he helps Yuika with the library duties. He also thanks her for her help with the club room the other day. Throughout their conversation, Kiki surmises that if Yuika is Cinderella, she wouldn't be able to talk so naturally to him. Out of nowhere, Yuika asks Kiki whether he likes big chests. This surprises him. After all, they were just talking casually, and suddenly, she bombards him with such a question. She tells him that she thought he joined the calligraphy club because of which senpai's magical chests. He strongly denies this claim. By the way, Yuika calls Sayuki witch senpai. He questions why she has trouble getting along with Sayuki, and she replies that big chests are the bane of existence for all flat-chested girls. According to her, which senpai is so pretty and charming that the big chest is already taking it too far. In PE class, Shama asks about Keiki's progress with finding Cinderella. Keiki reports that both Sayuki and Yuika were acting normally. He replies that he won't be surprised if one of them is Cinderella. Keiki observes that Shoma is always popular with the girls, and he admits that he envies his friend. He adds that he's bewildered because girls have no reason to like him. Shoma asks him why he is so kind to Sayuki and Yuika, and he responds that when you see a girl in trouble, you save her. Shoma concludes that girls definitely have reasons to like him. During their basketball game, Keiki is distracted by Mao, thinking she is glancing in Shoma's direction. He gets hit in the face by a ball and loses consciousness. He is already in the nurse's office with Mao waiting by his side when he wakes up. She tells him that school's out already, and he asks her if she was waiting for him. And she replies that sort of, and that she was bored. She asks him what's his problem since he's been spaced out all day. She also inquires whether he was looking at someone he is interested in. He asks her in return, If I were interested in someone, would you support me? She replies with a smile, No, not really. I can't honestly say I would support you. Then she leaves. That afternoon on his way home, Keiki thinks about whether Mao could be Cinderella. He runs into Sayuki outside, bringing a dog with her. She says that she's named him Vegetarian, but Keiki comments that the dog seems carnivorous. A few moments later, Vegetarian's true owner appears, taking the dog with her and thanking Sayuki for taking care of him. As they watch the dog and its owner walk away, Sayuki says she envies them. She tells Keiki that she wants him to pat her head. Keiki obliges, and it seems like they caught other people's attention. After the very innocent head pat, Sayuki gives him a kiss on the cheek, saying that it's his little reward for always being so kind. When he arrives at home, Mizuha is already preparing dinner. He asks her if she knew the last person who left the club room yesterday, 
and she replies that she thinks it was Sayuki. The next day at school, Keiki contemplates everything about Cinderella. In his mind, he was gone for 10 minutes. If the person who left the letter and undies during that time is really Sayuki, then he has to ask her properly. He thinks of a scenario wherein he arrives at a calligraphy club room and confronts her while holding the love letter in one hand and the pair of undies in the other. Sayuki replies coolly that she can't answer his question. He will then demand that she try on the undies right there, right now. Doing this would only send in Sayuki thinking that she's a dirty guy. He talks to himself, thinking of a more natural way to approach her. An idea crosses his mind. Why doesn't he ask her out on a date? Sayuki happens to be standing behind him when he blurts out his idea out loud, and she agrees to go on a date with him. On the date, Sayuki opens up that she's really grateful for everything he's done. The calligraphy, Shoto Club, would have to be disbanded if it wasn't for him. He recalls that the club was about to disband last year, with Sayuki being the only member. That is until Kiki showed up and joined the club. Keiki finally drops the question and asks Sayuki whether she is hiding something from him, like maybe some sort of special emotion towards him? Without saying a word, she ends up running away. The next day at school, Sayuki has been avoiding him the entire day. He was not even given the opportunity to at least greet her. He confides in Mao, and she advises that he use the wall slam technique. It's a special move that one uses when one wants to stop a girl from getting away. Basically, you pin a girl against the wall. Kabedon. Keiki asks her how girl feels about this technique. She replies that if the one doing it is someone the girl is interested in, it could be pretty exciting romantically. Eh, she's not wrong. After school, he catches sight of Sayuki leaving for home. He follows her, almost in a stalkerish way, but without hiding the fact that he's actually following her. When he finally catches up to her, he finds an opportunity to use the wall slam technique. He tells her that he knows her secret. She asks him since when, and he is surprised that she does not deny this. He replies that he's learned about it just recently, and that he wasn't certain but grew suspicious from her attitude. She again asks him, Now that you know my secret, do you dislike me? He responds, Dislike you? Of course not. Kiki tells the senpai he was surprised when he found out, but he didn't think that it was a bad thing at all. And in fact, he's really glad. Sayuki feels relieved to hear this. She tells him to go to the club room the next day, saying that she has something important to discuss. The next day, Kiki does what Sayuki has told him. He comes to the calligraphy club room. When he arrives, she tells him that she had a feeling that he could be someone who would accept her for who she really is. She asks him to close his eyes, to which he nervously does. When he opens his eyes, comes the shock of a lifetime. He sees Sayuki with her blouse unbuttoned and a collar on her neck. He exclaims, What on earth are you doing? She enthusiastically pleads, Please make me your pet, Keiki. Keiki asks Sayuki what she meant by this. She replies that she wants him to own her, insisting that he become her master. She recalls what he said the previous day about him not disliking her, despite being that way. She says she never thought about him finding out about her secret, that she is a hardcore masochist pervert. This comes as a bolt from the blue for Kiki. So this was the secret she was referring to, and before you even think it, no kink shaming allowed in this house, got it? He recalls that day when she was looking at the dog and its owner, and her saying that she envies them. It turns out she was envious of the dog, who had a master to scold it. She wanted someone to scold her too. Later that day, Kiki runs into one of his teachers in the hallway. She tells him that she went to check on the club room after he left and that he forgot to lock the room. He tells Shoma about this. He now thinks Cinderella was there in the room with him when he found the love letter. He theorizes that during the 10 minutes he was gone, Cinderella pretended to go home but came back. When she noticed that he had come back, she hid somewhere in the room in a hurry. He locked the room when he left, and she opened it from the inside and left before the teacher came to inspect. That sounds like a good theory. While sitting on a bench outside the school building, Shoma asks about Keiki's investigation of Sayuki, but he is too hesitant to admit that he found out her very well-kept secret. So he tells his friend that he couldn't find out if she was Cinderella. Keiki asks Shoma whether he's ever fantasized about making a girl his pet. But Shoma asks him instead if that's what gets him going these days, to Keiki's vehement denial. Shoma then advises him to investigate what the other girls are thinking. When the two friends arrive at their classroom, Keiki approaches Mao, thanking her for her wall slam advice the previous day. Thanks to her, Sayuki and him have already made up. At the library, Keiki does his library duties with Yuika. As Zika leaves her station to return some books on the shelf, a wild Sayuki appears, whispering something in Keiki's ear. He's so surprised by this that he lets out a loud shriek that disturbs some students. He asks Sayuki what she was doing there, and she replies that she tried blowing gently on his ear. Keiki further presses on, asking her why, and she responds that it's because of boredom. 
Keiki says that he doesn't enjoy being toyed with. And suddenly, Sayuki is in masochist mode. She says, Here is an insolent mud who angered her master. Don't you think she needs to be disciplined? Please torment me as you desire. I only ask that you go as harsh as possible. Yubika arrives, asking them to tone it down. The two girls have an exchange of words, seemingly fighting over Keiki. Sayuki boasts that she went on a date with him. Keiki asks if Yuika is mad, and if this is because she wanted to be treated to a parfait too. But this angers Yuika even more, and she runs away, calling him an idiot. Sayuki is still hanging around the library as Keiki tells her, asking her to leave. To tease him a bit more, she says out loud, You held my unwilling body down and so violently had your way with me! Yuika hears this, and appears to be even madder. He reasons out, saying it was just a wall slam. Sayuki then picks up a book on dog training, and with that, she leaves the library. Yuika asks Keiki if he went on a date with Witch Senpai. He explains that it was just her making him buy a parfait, and therefore was not a date. She also asks him if he did a romantic wall slam on Witch Senpai. He replies that he did. Yuika then questions whether the two of them are officially seeing each other. Keiki is surprised that she would even ask him such a question. It appears that Yuika has been feeling jealous of all the attention he's been giving Sayuki lately. So, he asks her what he can do to make her feel better. She asks him to go on a date with her on Sunday. And so begin of a harem. Oh wait, it is. At home, Keiki is pondering whether Yuika could be Cinderella. Mizuha overhears him talking about a date, so he tells her that he will be going on a date with Yuika. He wonders why she would ask to go on a date with him. And his sister replies that she doubts any girl would ask out a boy she doesn't like. Mizuha offers to teach him how to properly treat a girl. Step 1. Be there early. True enough, Keiki arrives earlier than Yuika. Step 2. Make sure to compliment her outfit and hairstyle. He does this smoothly, and Yuika seems glad after hearing this. The pair goes to a movie theater. Yuika asks what movie they will be watching, and Keiki says that she'll find out when she gets inside. Mizuha, step 3. Make sure you take the lead. He asks her to close her eyes as he takes her inside the movie theater. They watch the movie silently. This part is a success as well, as Yuika seems to have enjoyed it quite well. Step 4. Lunch at a fast food restaurant. Keiki also has this part covered. While having their lunch, they talk about the movie they just saw, a film adaptation of a book that Yubika had read. Step 5. Escort her shopping until she is completely satisfied. Keiki does this well too. Yuika feels satisfied after going to a lot of shops and buying, well, nothing. For her, the date is what's important, not the buying of things. She excuses herself to go to the toilet. But on her way out, she is stopped by a bunch of suspicious-looking guys who are probably there to hit on her. Keiki now realizes that she's been taking so long. Now worried, he proceeds to go to the bathroom and sees her surrounded by the guys. He comes to her aid, grabbing her by the hand and running away from them. Once they are at a safe distance away from the creeps, Yuika apologizes for ruining their date. Keiki tells her there's no need to apologize. He apologizes to her instead. Yuika then playfully gives him a kiss on the forehead. He asks her what's it about, and she responds that it's just a token of her gratitude for saving her. The pair leaves the mall after a long day. On the way to the train station, Yuika sticks close to Keiki with their arms linked. He comments that he could feel her chest against his arm, and she says that hers are quite insignificant compared to which senpai's chest. While boarding the train, Yuika falls asleep on Keiki's shoulder. He later learns that she is racially mixed. Her hair and eyes were beautiful to him. But apparently, this has caused people to push her away. He thinks that maybe other people found her beauty difficult to approach. He recalls their earlier days of interacting with each other. Yuika used to be stone cold towards him. She would often sit alone in the library, reading a book. Keiki talked to her every day until she replied with a phrase here and there. As time went by, she finally warmed up to him and would even engage in long conversations with him. That led to their present relationship of being good friends. The next day at school, Keiki shares with Shoma about his progress with Yuika. He tells him that he couldn't investigate whether she is Cinderella since he is too busy with the first date of his lifetime. He gets a text message from Yuika that they have something important to discuss. She asks him to come to the library storage area after school. He asks Shoma what he thinks of the text message, and they assume it must be some sort of confession. Maybe Yuika is Cinderella after all. Classes are finally done for the day, and Keiki makes his way to the library storage room. When he arrives, Yuika is already waiting for him. Can this girl really be the one he's been looking for? Yuika starts by telling him that she had a feeling that he could be the one. He's been so kind to her when he taught her how to be a school librarian, and even on their date, he displayed his kindness, saving her when she got in trouble. She says that she's hoping he could see her as his only one. She asks him, Keiki senpai, can you become my servant? He is dumbfounded as well as me. 
He had no idea the conversation was even going in that route. He replies, That came out weird. Did you just ask me to become your servant? She responds, Yes, exactly and accurately. Kiki exclaims, Could I please be wrong on this one? And just when we were thinking that she's Cinderella, sweet little Yuika turns out to like hurting her partner when getting it on. The exact opposite of Sayuki. Yuika asks if that's a no from him. He tries to explain himself, and so she innocently asks, Becoming a servant to a cute girl like me, isn't that kind of a treat for boys? She asks that if he agrees to become her servant, she will give him something precious. Out of nowhere, she starts sticking her undies off and hands them over to the terrified Keiki. According to her, freshly worn undies makes boys happy. So he sets the record straight and asserts that this only applies to a very specific subset of pervs. He stumbles to the ground. Looks like I'm gonna have to punish you until you learn your lesson. She forcefully places her undies inside his mouth, gagging him. She gets excited at the sight of Keiki struggling to fight her off. She reassures him that she will be gentle with her training. With the undies blocking his mouth, Keiki passes out. What a wild ride it has been for Keiki. From receiving a love letter with a pair of undies down to knowing that his dear upperclassman is a masochist, and his cute underclassman is brutal in bed. This series of bizarre events is the oddity that keeps on giving. One thing's for sure though, things will only get more exciting from there. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.